Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, as a skeptic, it was hard to explain what was going on in his house. Was it Amy? This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Hey, share your real ghost story with us. We would love to hear it. Call in anytime. It's 855 853-4802. You can also write it in. Do that at realghoststoriesonline.com. Then you can get ad-free versions of the show if you want to go that way. You'll also get the advanced episodes, access to the archive. By the way, it's massive. Then become a premium subscriber. Do that through Apple Podcasts. Try it three days free. You can also sign up through patreon.com slash realghoststories or at ghostpodcast.com. I'm Carol Hughes, and my sister Kathy Gordon is with me today. Well, hello. How are things going? It's hot (laughs) AF, but other than that... Yeah, I think it's supposed to be about 104 today or something. Yeah, it's really bad. Yeah. Our friend Pete from Australia, we had an episode with him on the other day. He messaged me um, the other day, and he's in Australia, and he's like, so is it still hot there? (laughs) Because they're much cooler weather. It's their they're, winter. They're flipped. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, excessive heat warnings every day. That's interesting. Well, you know, I'm thinking, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around the fact that someone named Amy could be a ghost. I know. It's just such kind a fun name. Every Amy I've ever known has been a nice person that I've liked. And it's, you know, Pure Prairie League did that song about Amy. And I just think that Amy just seems like such an upbeat positive kind of happy name i'm having a hard time thinking of a ghost as amy right and if and it seems like amy the helpful ghost like she would be the one who would be doing all the things around the house and helping you out yeah thanks amy yeah so so i don't know let's give this one a listen and see where it goes So it says, let me start by saying I'm in my mid fifties and I never really experienced anything I could attribute to, and this is in quotes, ghosts. I've always enjoyed reading or watching shows about the paranormal as a form of entertainment. Call me a skeptic. However, my views are leaning towards maybe there is something to this. That was also in quotes. My wife is a believer and has had several experiences in her life. She told me that she believed there was a ghost in her house. My story is pretty tame compared to most. It begins with the purchase of a new home a few years ago. The home was built in the late 70s, so it's not like it has a really long history. It's a modest one and a half story Cape Cod style home. There are two bedrooms upstairs, one on the main floor. There's an open balcony at the top of the stairs that is essentially a hallway between the two upstairs bedrooms. This balcony balcony looks down on the main floor. So if you wanted to, like, do um, Broadway musical scenes in that house, you could do Don't Cry For Me, Argentina, (laughs) and you could do that above the people in the living room downstairs, and they would be like, oh, that was so cool. Well, I was just thinking how delightful the house sounded. Right. And I'm thinking I was about like using it for ca- musicals. Ca- yeah. And I'm thinking this sounds like a wonderful house. But you can't tell me that if you went to somebody's house and they had that set up going on, you would, I would totally sneak up there and do that. Would I would. And I would well, make everybody emotional and they would be like, God, Carol can not really sing, but that was great. <laughs> but it was very moving. <laughs> So anyway, it says, not long after my wife and I moved in, I would notice what I call shadows, also in quotes, out of the corners of my eyes. No detail, but just a bit of movement at the edge of my peripheral vision. When I turned my head to better see what was moving, I would see nothing there. This happened on a nearly daily basis. I wrote it off to getting older and declining vision. I mentioned it to my wife and found out that she, too, had been seeing the same thing. This was pretty much all that happened for over a year. During our second year in the house, we began to notice things being misplaced. Little things like an ink pen that we kept in the exact same place to jot down notes would come up missing and then show up in the oddest places like the bathtub. At first you think, I must have just taken it into the bathroom and it fell in the tub. But after a while, you begin to take note of where you place things a little bit better. And this was happening more often than I originally had thought. We are the type of people who turn off 
all of the lights in our house when we go to bed at night. We don't typically leave lights on in rooms we are not in. I decided to install a pair of motion activated lights near the top of the stairs and bottom of the stairs that ensured that we would be able to see the stairs well if we needed to use them in the middle of the night. They worked like a charm. After about two months after being installed, my wife began to notice the lights coming on all by themselves. It only happened if I was not at home or asleep in bed. I didn't see this happening. No one was near them. We don't have pets, so I figured it must be a mouse or something. I did a test by rigging something a little bigger than a mouse to a string to see if I could make the lights activate. I could not. Turning the lights on takes something at least one foot above the floor. I was beginning to think my wife was being paranoid or had an overactive imagination. That was until I began to notice the lights too. Creepy. Mm. I checked the lights multiple times to see if there was something wrong with them. Nothing. You had to get within four to five feet to cause them to turn on. I tried turning on ceiling fans to see if that was maybe the cause. Nope. There was just no explanation for it. The really odd thing was that first one light would turn on, then a few seconds a few seconds later, the other light would light up, just as if a person was passing them. Sometimes the light at the bottom of the stairs would come on first, followed by the light at the top of the stairs seconds later. Other times it would be reversed. It began to happen often enough that my wife asked me to disable them because it just freaked her out too much. Which is sad because they did need the lights, but that's weird that they keep doing that. Yeah, but I'm kind of with her, you know, that that just would bug you. I know, and it keeps happening, and Mm -hmm. what's triggering them? It didn't really bother me because I looked at it as a curiosity more than something that felt ominous. She was just too creeped out by it. She was beginning to feel somewhat threatened. She couldn't explain why, but she did. Not long after I removed the lights, I was talking with a neighbor. In conversation, I mentioned that my wife thought the house was haunted. My neighbor said, it must be Amy. I asked, well, who is Amy? And he told me that the lady who sold the house to us had a daughter who unfortunately passed away from an illness at about about 10 years old. That happened about 15 years ago. He informed me that the bedroom downstairs was hers. That was where I would sometimes see shadows. The other place I would see the shadows was near the door to the master bedroom upstairs. It was finally making some sense. If it is her ghost, I guess she is going between her bedroom and her mom's room or vice versa. I relayed the story to my wife and she is less creeped out by it now, but she still doesn't want the lights on. I kind of enjoy having a haunted house. There does not seem to be any malevolent intentions by our guest. I do wish she would stop moving things, though. Mike. I don't know. It kind of makes some sense because it's not—it's nothing mean. It's something more playful. Well, you know, and just I, I love that the neighbors always know. Mrs. Kravitz always knows. Like, if you ever have a question about your house being on it, just go next door. Yeah. They fine. always seem to be able yeah. they go, oh, well, there was that one time that that person died. You Everybody's know? got that one neighbor that's lived in the neighborhood for quite a while. Yep. And Mine is know. David. And yep. David and knows David everything. Knows. He would know if someone died in your house and if the UPS man came the next day or whatever. I mean, like, they know everything. So I'm always like, have you talked to the neighbors? Well, and David would know, like, if you're an alcoholic. (laughs) I don't know if he goes through your trash, but the lady on the other side of him, he's like, well, you know, she's an alcoholic. (laughs) And I'm like, I I didn't know. I did not know that. I did not know that. No, no, I don't know. I'm, I'm usually the last to know any of those things. But I I do think that it is it is funny that we have all these ghost stories and people always say, well, they talk to the neighbor. 
And the neighbor told him who it was, who this ghost. Oh, well, you must be talking about this person or that person. And because that would have been a significant event to them. If they're Absolutely. living there and this young girl dies. It would have like, been oh my so God, tragic. God, I couldn't imagine. And it's hard after you lose somebody you love to leave that place. You feel like you're abandoning them. Yeah. You know, but then you and so the mom probably to. felt like I need to stay here for a long time and then eventually decided maybe for her own health she, she just needed to go ahead and you know start over and try to you know move forward with her life so she sold the house but you know they wouldn't have known that part of that house and so it's kind of nice that they've moved in they seem to be a really nice couple and have brought some joy to the house and I love the fact that they seem to be able to coexist uh, happily. It seems to be that they're okay with it, though the wife does seem like, I don't want the lights on. I mean, I don't want to know when the ghost is walking through the house. You know, that, that bothers me. Something but, pretty creepy about yeah. that. But I kind of love the fact that they're like, it's okay. We're I okay do too. I like that. Mm -hmm. And especially knowing that it could be the ghost of a little girl. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, we can take her in because you yeah. kind of feel that. Yeah. So I, I think it's it's pretty sweet, though. He is right. It, I would find it very annoying if I wanted my car keys and they had oh, moved. I'd be like, Amy, you Amy bring me what those you gonna car do? keys. What you going to do? <laughs> I think I could talk to you for a long time about these car keys. Maybe yeah. longer <laughs> if I do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Got, I just It's think, a good song, guys. If you haven't listened to Amy by Pure Fairy Lady. It is go a good it. song. I like mm -hmm. it. I so think. let's go on to another story. This says, um, this happened about two years ago when my cousin, his sister, and brother in law moved into a new home in Little Shoot, Wisconsin. That weekend I decided that's a funny name to me. I don't know why. Little Shoot. L it's spelled S H U T. C H U T E. Oh, E. Oh, okay. Little shoot. 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 Like it's oh. a shoot, not S H O O T. That would be just like, oh, shucks, a little town. Yeah, shoot. Oh, shoot. Yeah. I was um, going sh shut, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that weekend, I decided to visit their new home because they were doing a housewarming celebration since they'd moved in three months ago and I spent the night with them. Later that night, my cousin and I stayed up late watching movies, catching up and playing games as usual, 20-year-old 20 20 men would do. My cousin then told me about a creepy house experience that he had experienced about a week before. He said that he was not sure if it was real or not because he was half asleep and half awake. Anyways, a week before, he slept downstairs in the basement because it was really hot. And then in parentheses, it says, Wisconsin summer, I tell you. <laughs> Where he slept downstairs was under the kitchen floor and the small laundry, ro laundry room, which was connected to the kitchen. In the laundry room, they kept a box of toy cars, Hot Wheels, from when some of their little nephews came and visited and left it there. That night, when he slept in the basement, he was woken up by a big, big bang on the wall on the wall connected to an unfinished bedroom in the basement. He then just rubbed it off as something probably fell and went back to sleep. According to him, it was around 4.30-ish in the morning. As he was falling back to sleep, he heard someone playing with the toy cars upstairs on the kitchen floor, like they were rolling the cars around the kitchen floor. They didn't have any small children living with them. He then got freaked out and he tried to think positively like it was the pipes and dozed off to sleep. I, I, I get that. Like you're hearing something mm -hmm. creepy at night and it's like, I got to debunk this. So it's the pipes. But if I'm still mm -hmm. hearing it, I could never go back to sleep. I know. I know. can't do it. You do try to put a positive spin on it and say, well, you know. Because this, be this house, other thing. when I moved in, it does make weird noises when the wind blows really hard. And in Kansas, that's frequently. And it took mm -hmm. me a while of laying there in bed going, oh my God, what is it? And then yeah. I finally 
I got to where I would look at the wind speed on my phone and be like, oh, it's pretty windy. Mm. And then the next time, mm, pretty windy again. Yeah, but I don't think you can mistake something rolling across the floor above you. Exactly. So it says, when he woke up that morning, he checked if anything had fallen in the unfinished bedroom where the Big Bang came from, and there was nothing in the room or anything that could have possibly triggered the, the Big Bang. He then went upstairs and checked around the kitchen. There was also no sign of any Hot Wheels anywhere. Every toy car was in the box where it was left. Later that night, when his sister and brother-in-law came home from work, he asked them if they had seen or heard of any toy cars in the kitchen or a Big Bang as they slept upstairs. They replied no and thought he was just dreaming. After hearing about a story that he experienced and demoed the Hot Wheels and how it sounded on the kitchen floor, I brushed it off and told him he was just overthinking things and that he was probably dreaming because, like he said, he was half awake and half asleep. Well, that night, we both slept in the basement because it was too hot. They didn't have AC, and we stayed up late as well. But my cousin fell asleep around 3 a.m. while I was still up talking to my girlfriend at the time. 4.30 a.m. rolled around, and while I was preparing to sleep, I heard a few footsteps upstairs in the kitchen. I then brushed it off as it was my cousin's sister up for something, which you would do. You'd hear footsteps, and you'd be like, well, obviously, it's somebody getting a drink of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few moments later, I then heard someone playing with the toy cars on the kitchen floor. Rolling the cars from one side of the kitchen to the other side, it happened a few times, and then I got curious and was like, no way this is happening. So I slowly went upstairs while the toy car was being rolled around still, and as I slowly opened the basement door to look into the kitchen, the rolling sound stopped, and there was no one there. I really was expecting to see something, so I then turned on the lights and looked around the kitchen for the cars or anything that could have made such a sound and found nothing. All of a sudden, I got this cold, freezing chill down my back, and the lights started to flicker. I felt as I felt as I felt as if someone was right behind me. I would know if my cousin was behind me because I would have heard him coming up the stairs. That feeling got me so scared that I took off running into my cousin's room upstairs, shut the door, jumped on his bed, covered myself in blankets, and went to sleep leaving the lights and everything how it was that night. The next morning, my cousin came into the room and said, why did I come and sleep upstairs? I told him the whole story of what I had experienced, and later that day we asked his sister and brother-in-law about anyone being up late at night or if they heard anything and they weren't up and they didn't hear anything. So my experience just proved that my cousin's experience was real and that something paranormal was definitely going on. Writing this still gives me the chills because that was my first paranormal experience ever. Since then, and throwing out those Hot Wheels, my cousin and I haven't really experienced many things there as they're still living at the same house. So what do you think? Well, why would it just quit doing things? I mean, well, like just because the Hot the, Wheels are possessed? Well, and that's the weird thing because maybe the I never thought of a haunted object as being a Hot Wheels car. But maybe, I guess it, it, anything could happen. But I do think it's weird because the Hot Wheels weren't really moving around on the floor. Because if you would have gone up the stairs and turned on the light, you would have seen a Hot Wheel car. That would have been really weird because, Mm -hmm. like, they shouldn't be up there, but there was nothing. So they're only hearing the sound. But when they get rid of the cars, then he said not much else has happened, right? Mm Mm-hmm. That's, I'm, I'm just not exactly sure what to think. I mean, I totally believe that he was hearing something up there and it sounded like Hot Wheels cars, but could it have been something else? Was there something other than that, that would be making that noise? But nothing uh, is, I mean, it's just, I don't know. Could be coincidence. They threw out the Hot Wheels and the 
shit stopped. But yeah. I don't know. It just seems weird. It is a weird one to me. Mm-hmm. Because it happened to him. It happened to both of them. So that kind of right. is good. That validates yeah. it. Yeah. So that would be good. Awesome. It happened to you too. I'm not crazy. Yeah. But that's, the fact that's that it doesn't helpful. happen again, it's like, it's why? It's just odd. Not? Yeah. And did they huh. throw out the Hot Wheels or did they get, they should have given them back. So yeah, they, they, ca- they came from the nephew. It was like a kid's Hot Wheels, you know, and throw out a kid's Hot Wheels. Let me see. And where did the Hot Wheels come from originally? Did they come from, did that kid bring them or did he? they pick up a, a box of Hot Wheels at a garage sale that somebody was getting it, rid no, of? No, and- in the laundry room, they kept a box of toy cars from when some of their little nephews came and visited and left it there. So it sounds okay, but like we don't know the where ne- they came from originally. It could have been, My guess you know, would be I was Walmart? at a garage sale. Yeah. I picked up some there. Look, there's a box of Hot Wheels. Let's take them home for the kids when they come. And then who knows what you brought with you. I know it's so funny because you think of haunted objects as dolls, number one, or mirrors, or maybe an antique dresser. I don't know. But you, mm-hmm. you think of them as being old antique things. You don't think of them as being Hot Wheels. I don't know. I huh. think it's interesting. They got rid of the Hot Wheels and then it stopped, but the Hot Wheels were only, they weren't really making the noise. I think it would have been even creepier if the Hot Wheels would have been in the kitchen or they're finding Hot Wheels. Like in all over places. the floor. Yeah, or, yeah in like, weird places. It's like, yeah. wait, whoa, whoa. The Hot Wheels should be in the laundry room in the box. Then you got to break I, it to a nephew. Yeah, your Hot Wheels. I threw them away. They were possessed. Yeah, satanic Hot Wheels. <laughs> and then. The kid's like, what do you mean by that? What do you mean they're possessed? Well, let me explain that to well, you. They're really hot. You need hot. to learn this. As, you need to learn I mean, they're this really hot, point. like as in hot as hell hot. I mean. Yeah, because it's just a demonic <laughs> spirit, and it's letting the devil in. So if you want right. to play with them, that's fine, but that's on you. Sorry you had to learn a life lesson this way. You were going to learn it eventually anyway, so start playing with other things less demonic, okay? Well, it was very frightening because he went upstairs and covered his head and went to sleep upstairs. So we know that, you know, it was super scary. I just and can't quite figure out why. what is it with these people? Why. What is it with these people who can have a paranormal experience in the middle of the night and then they go back to bed? I know. Like, we hear that all the time. They go, that? and then I fell asleep and I'm like, you fell asleep? <laughs> You know, you just After saw Reagan, devil you know, from The wheels? Exorcist <laughs> hanging over your bed and right? you went back to sleep. You woke up and saw a sailor hanging in your doorway. I remember that yeah, from you the don't, show, one of the shows. I'm telling what? you. What? No. Wait. And here's the deal. After that happens, every light in my house is turned on and the TV and I am watching the Dick Van Dyke show. Yeah. You know, I mean. Like, or no. I'm watching the Dick Van Dyke show from my car 20 miles That's away right. on my phone. Or I'm phone. driving somewhere yeah. around town, you know, I mean, think, waiting for daylight. Like, it scared the shit out of me. But then I went back to bed. So. And I'm like, you went back to sleep. <laughs> how, how? <laughs> well, if you like the show and you want an ad-free experience, sign up to be a premium subscriber. Do that through applepodcast.com. Try it for three days free. Or sign up through patreon.com slash real ghost stories or ghost podcast. And for all of us here at Real Ghost Stories Online, thanks for listening.